Welcome to the second part of the Muscular Injuries Online Learning. Now this one focuses on structural muscle injuries and contusions. So let's go ahead and find out what they are and how we can help as a sports massage therapist. What we will cover. We're going to find out what a structural muscle injury is and what a contusion is. And then we're going to focus on the sports massage guidelines to follow each phase of healing when working with clients with these types of injuries. We'll be using the Munich Consensus alongside this learning. This is where a lot of the science for this presentation has come from. But we'll start with that little recap from the level three about the difference between uh, muscle strains and the different grades of them, as this relates really closely to what a structural muscle injury is. So just that recap from the level three. So the muscle or tendon strain is the overstretching of the tissue, causing the muscle fibers, tendons and blood vessels and fascia to tear. And they have the different grades, so grades one to three. Now, a structural muscle injury is the new terminology for a muscle or a tendon strain. But it just goes into a little bit more detail about what may be happening at that time. Um, and also a bit more detail about how we can help as well. So the Munich Consensus describes a structural muscle injury into two sections. So it's type 3 and type 4. And that's a partial muscle tear. So then we're looking, if we're trying to compare against the grades 1 to 3, we're looking at a grade 1 to grade 2. Uh, so it's a partial muscle tear. And that also is divided up into minor and then a moderate. So it's broken down even further than just looking at those grades from 1 to 3. And then type 4 is a subtotal tear, so it's a bigger tear of the tissue. And again, that's divided into uh, either a subtotal or a complete tear or a tendon avulsion, where the tendon comes away from the bone. So we're going to look at those in a little bit more detail. The next injury we're going to be focusing on is a contusion or a laceration. And that's slightly different from the structural muscle injury as it's a direct muscle injury. So if you go back to the beginning of the previous slides or the previous online learnings and we discussed indirect and direct. So contusion is a direct muscle injury. So it's often caused by force or contact. For the online learning, we're going to start looking at the structural muscle injury and the science behind it, then into the contusion, and then we're going to focus on the sports massage guidelines around both of those types of injuries. So what is a structural muscle injury? It's an acute injury, it's indirect. There may be macroscopic evidence of a muscle tear, so bigger evidence of a muscle tear. It's often caused by lots of different things and it limits function. So it's quite similar to the functional muscle disorder, but the difference being is that the functional muscle disorder is often considered to have a microscopic evidence of a muscle tear. So it works a bit like a spectrum really between functional muscle disorder and then into a structural muscle injury. So the most common structural muscle injuries are stretch-induced muscle injuries, which are caused by a sudden force of lengthening or during a powerful muscle contraction, and it's quite common to be around the muscle tendon junction area. But it also can occur anywhere along the muscle or tendon, acutely or chronically. So it can happen really over the length or belly of the muscle, but it's most common found at the muscular tendinous junction. So this is a terminology that we can use instead of using a muscle strain and focusing on those grades. So looking at the minor partial muscle tear. So the signs and symptoms that you may see with your clients in clinic is a sharp localized pain. You may be able to feel a defect in the muscle where there's a dip in the muscle where the, the tear has occurred. And when the client stretches the muscle, there is a lot more pain in that particular area. And what you might find is when you do your injury assessments, you might find that it would create a positive test for a muscular injury. The next is a moderate partial muscle tear, so slightly more fibres. And again, similar symptoms. So there'll be sharp localised pain in an area. There'll be noticeable tearing at the time of injury. So the client may actually say they felt something um, tear or rip or something ping at the time of the injury. There's a quite often a hematoma, so you'll see some bruising around the area. And the same with the, the minor, there'll be some pain when the muscle is put under a stretch. And this is a really nice example to look at the difference between the major and the minor partial muscle tears. This is also taken from the Munich Consensus. So you can see you've got your muscle belly, you have your secondary fascicle bundles, your primary fascicle bundles, the muscle fibre and then the myofibril. So when we're looking at the 
minor partial tear and that often happens in the primary bundle, bundle of fascicles so a smaller bundle of fascicles um, within the muscle belly and a moderate partial muscle tear is in that secondary bundle of fascicles so a bigger bundle of fascicles has been damaged through the injury Next, we have a subtotal muscle tear and a tendon avulsion. And this is where the muscle has completely torn or the tendon has come away from the bone. So the signs and symptoms that you may see um, or your client may describe is a dull pain at the time of injury. There's definitely noticeable tearing at that particular time as well. You can feel and see the gap often within the tissue where the injury has occurred. There's often an intermuscular hematoma, so a hematoma deep within the tissues. There's pain when moving, so rather than just a stretch, pain when the muscle is being used or moving generally. And there's also quite a big loss of function within that tissue as well. So it's a lot more uh, serious than looking at the major and the minor uh, muscle tears or partial muscle tears. With this type of injury, your clients may describe the sound of a snapping or a popping during that time of an injury, especially when you're looking at bigger tendons. The Achilles tendon is one of them as an example. And if the muscle injury has occurred within the lower part of the body, then they will often fall over because the pain, the tearing at the time and the loss of function will cause them to become unbalanced and often fall over. We include the tendon avulsion injury into this presentation. We have a separate online learning about tendon injuries, but we've included in this classification system because they mean a total tear of the origin of the insertion of the muscle. So where the bone tendon joins, that's a tendon avulsion, but the tendon is a continuation of the muscle. So it feels right to add it into this classification. Next is the contusion, so a slightly different injury. And if you think back to the initial discussion of the Munich consensus, this is the direct injury. So it's direct muscle trauma caused by an object. So that could be a person, so it could be a sporting collision. It could be um, falling into some types of equipment, something like that. And the signs and symptoms that the client may experience are direct muscle trauma, which creates a hematoma to that particular area. They may see pain and swelling in the area. There may be a decrease of range of movement and function, but it also depends on the severity. So they may have a knock into another play if they're playing a particular sport. There may be a little bit of a bruise, but then they may be able to carry on depending on the severity of the injury and what's happened. This may often be sport dependent if your client is a sports person. So if you're looking at football, then it may be more uh, leg related contusions if they're trying to get the ball. Um, if you're looking at uh, more contact sports such as rugby, then there may be some more he head injuries involved. Um, but it might be with also different bits of equipment as well. I've worked at cycle events where cyclists have crashed into each other and then fallen over. So the impact has come either from the bike, the other cyclist or from the floor been knocked off their bike. So what is our goal when we're working with clients that have experienced a structural muscle disorder? Well, the main goal is to help the client move without pain and get them back to sport and exercise as quickly as possible. In clinic, you're most likely to see clients that have experienced structural muscle disorders, so either functional or structural muscle injuries, rather than contusions. Contusions happen and they will probably head somewhere like to A&E to see their GP, or if they're playing a sport, they might get um, attended to by the first aid attendant at the sporting event. It's only maybe later when they still experience a bit of pain, you may see clients with contusions. So our four main goals for structural muscle injuries, we want to reduce pain for clients. It's about calming the nervous system down to help them build in those exercises to build that strength after the injury. We want to increase their range of movement and again to create that pain-free window for their home care. So it's all about reducing that nervous system to help them get back to movement as quickly as possible. Before we start, it's about taking a really good client history to find out all of the factors involved. You want to consider what has happened and why it may have happened. So get as much information in your subjective assessments with your clients. It's really important to discount any red flags before you start working with your clients and so make sure you ask all of those relevant questions within your online learning forms or your subjective assessments. Assess the range of movement of the joint involved see what's happening, check your muscle assessment, so focus on those injury assessments or muscle assessments and see if you think there may be a muscle injury. 
check for all of those signs of inflammation. So thinking about your uh, cardinal signs of injuries, and then you can treat that inflammation accordingly. But if you do suspect a moderate or a subtotal tear or an avulsion, they need to be referred for diagnosis. So send them to either their local GP or to a physiotherapist. Or if you think they need um, urgent medical care, send them to A&E to get that diagnosis as soon as they possibly can. What you may find is a lot of your clients may have potential structural muscle injury, may have left it for a little while and then come to see you. It's really important you take all of that history down before you start treating them, to know that you can treat them and treat them effectively. And as with anything, if you're not sure, always send them for a referral first, just to make sure that you can work with them um, at that later stage. So let's begin looking at the guidelines for the bleeding and inflammation or acute phase in the phases of tissue healing. So the first thing we want to do in the first 72 hours of an acute injury is focus on that do no harm acronym and avoiding heat, any alcohol, re-injuring what's already happened or the area and then focusing on massage. So no massage is to be applied in the first 72 hours of any acute injury. In this phase also, we want to be focusing on peace, so protection, elevation, avoiding anti-inflammatories, some compression, and then education around what's happening with your client. So refer back to the phases of tissue healing, where we discuss this acronym in a little bit more detail. During the phase up to three days, so around 72 hours, there are things that we can do. So we focus on peace, so refer back to that acronym. We can look at some passive movement that's mid-range to an active range of movement where it's tolerated and that's about client education about what ranges feels comfortable for them but the main thing you want to ensure that you focus on is avoiding general massage to that injury site in particular the specific techniques that you can use during this phase are passive movement so focus on that mid-range to an active range where it's tolerated for the client to achieve the optimal mechanical stress that's about that client communication within those ranges that feel comfortable for them you can provide general massage into the area of injury that's got no signs of inflammation or swelling and you can also massage other areas of the body at the same time Avoid the injury site if there is a visible injury and visible signs of inflammation and swelling. So depending on the type of injury and the severity of the injury, it might be a local contraindication at the time for general massage, but you can focus on other parts of the body based on what you found in the subjective and objective assessments and what other areas that the client may need help and support with. Muscle energy techniques may be a technique that can be used to the affected tissue where it is tolerated and when there is zero pain on the muscle contraction. So no pain whatsoever should be present. What these techniques do is it creates an analgesic effect on the tissue. So it kind of reduces that pain. But you may find that you need to contract the antagonist muscle rather than the agonist muscle in the muscle energy technique to get the desired response. So you contract the opposing muscle. Using positional release techniques is a really good way of restoring ease into the area. It affects the nervous system like other massage techniques we have available, but it can also improve the range of movement. So you can apply this onto unaffected joints close to the injury site. The next phase we're going to focus on is the proliferation phase and the repair phase of that structural injury. So during the proliferation and the remodeling phase, we want to focus on using techniques from the acronym, the peace and love acronym. And we can focus on love during this phase. And this phase is starting to think about movement. So encouraging your client to load the tissues. It's about being positive and optimistic when you're talking to your client about the injury and what's happening. Getting them to do other ex exercises that create vascularization, so increasing that blood flow to help the repairing tissues and then using the strength and conditioning and proprioception exercises to help restore ease and also help recover after the injury. Now during that phase or that stage, if you aren't qualified in creating a detailed exercise program, then working with somebody else to help that can help your client move and feel better a lot quicker. The guidelines for the subacute phase, we're gonna focus on the time frame between seven to 21 days and we're about focusing on that love acronym. The techniques that we can start to apply is looking at passive, active and resisted movement. So looking at those injury assessments and using them as that treatment process. 
ensure that those active ranges of movement can be tolerated. And when they can, it's a way to create optimal mechanical stress to help that tissue repair process. General massage in this area or the area of injury can be applied as long as there is no inflammation um, or swelling or signs of either. You want to avoid this area, treat it as a local contraindication if there are visible signs of inflammation and swelling. But again, you can focus on other areas of the body depending on what you found in your subjective and objective assessments. We can focus on using muscle energy techniques to that affected tissue, again, as long as there is no pain in that contraction, which then creates that analgesic effect on the tissues and decreases any excess tone or hypertonicity within those tissues. We can also start to bring in some soft tissue release techniques, both transverse and longitudinal, which will begin to help improve that proprioception to the area, focusing on the eccentric movement and improving that range of movement at the joint. But again, always ensure that there is no signs of inflammation and swelling during this phase. So depending on the severity of the injury, you may need to not use this technique for a little while longer. If there is signs of inflammation and swelling and you want to use some of the soft tissue release techniques, then focus on working above the injury site, so more proximal to the midline of the body. And now we're going to progress further into the remodeling and the maturation phase of the injury, so towards the end of the tissue repair process. Now this time frame is quite long, so we can go from anywhere from 21 days up to 12 months. The focus is on love, so keep focusing on that acronym. And this is a point now, if there's no signs of inflammation and swelling, that you can start to apply general massage to that particular area of injury. And this is a really good way of improving that proprioception to the area, but also helping calm the area down if there is still pain present, even though there are no signs of inflammation or swelling or those other cardinal signs. If there is pain, then trigger points around that injury site and other parts of the body um, can be used. So some of those techniques are really good for reduce that pain, but focusing more of a global rather than just that local area. And there is some science around that friction massage can help stimulate connective tissue remodeling. So some friction may be used in that injury site as long as there is no cardinal signs of injury. And again, it's about communicating with your clients about what feels good at that time and keep focusing on your subjective and objective assessments. And if things change and you're still not sure that your client is um, healing as well as you think, then always send them for an, a referral for a, a diagnosis. We can also then continue to use those other techniques that we have been using throughout the tissue repair process, such as the muscle energy techniques and soft tissue release as well. And those work really well through the subacute right through to the remodeling phase to help improve that proprioception, improve that range of movement and then decrease any hypertonicity. But again, always think global rather than just local and work out what else might be going on for your client at that particular time. And that falls into the next slide about thinking about the whole body approach. So what else may be happening at the time of the structural injury? Are there any posture movement restricts causing aggravating factors that can be considered as part of the whole treatment plan? Remember, a structural injury is a multifactorial injury and there's lots of reasons why things may be happening or may have caused that injury. So think about your client as a whole person and what else may be happening. Look at the other factors of injury that may be involved and ask lots of detailed questions within your subjective questioning to ensure that you've got the whole picture so you can really help that client in the long term and reduce any risk of re-injuring that particular area. During some of the phases, so into the acute, the subacute, and the proliferation phase, some other techniques may be really useful. So we have instrument-assisted massage that can be used in the subacute proliferation phase as long as there's no swelling, which um, some science has suggested that it helps improve fibroblast activity, but it also helps calm the nervous system down to help improve that movement. So if you're qualified to use tools with movement, then that might be another modality to use as well. Again, taping is a great way to combine with treatment throughout all of the phases to help improve that healing process, um, but also reduce that pain to help that client move more uh, and feel better sooner. So again, if you're qualified in taping, you can use that modality alongside your sports massage treatments. But with both of these modalities, ensure that you are completely qualified before you add them into your sports massage techniques. So the guidelines for home care for a structural muscle injury. 
You want to recommend a detailed home care plan for optimal loading. So that's specific exercises to help build strength within those tissues. If this is an area that's not your area of expertise, then work with somebody that can help create that detailed program for your client. Suggest so pain-free cardiovascular exercise, which helps with improved blood flow to the area, which can help the healing process. But I think it's also a really nice way to get your client to maintain movement and exercise, if that's what they were doing prior to the injury, which then helps improve their mood during this injury recovery phase. And lastly, it's so important to communicate well with your clients. You want to educate them on tissue healing and, and the process and how that works, but in a really simple and clear way so they understand and really focus on the outcomes uh, rather than the tissue healing times because everyone varies. So focus on their goals, their short term and medium term goals and the outcomes that they've achieved so far rather than expecting them to follow the linear tissue healing plan. And this helps with clients motivation through that tissue healing phase. And finally, this is the reading and resources that you can do to continue your learning in this area.